so we will we will give people uh, just a few more seconds to filter in and then we'll get started. All right, how we doing? It's the last session before the vendor showcase. You feeling okay? Okay, <laughs> good. I'm getting nods. My name is Kat Donnell. I am the membership engagement specialist at the Pennsylvania Integrated Library System. We are a system of a consortium of about 160 libraries across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And my job as a membership engagement specialist involves a lot of mass emails, marketing. Um, so we just wanted to share a little bit about um, some of the things we've been working on in the past couple of years. And this is Katie, my colleague. Um, she's the executive director for PALES. Um, and so if, if nothing that we tell you today is new to you, we at least hope that you can join in a conversation with us afterwards about what's working for you in terms of communication. Um, what sorts of projects are you working on? What's your marketing? Do you have a marketing team? Stuff like that. So let's just get into it. So why is communication with your consortia important? Uh, so one of the things, and, and I'll go into a little bit more detail um, about our strategic priorities and how this plays in, uh, but when I, I came to PALS as the executive director in January of 2022, so I'm just over a year in, and it had been a time of significant turnover for the organization, um, and uh, one of the things that was consistently communicated to me is that um, our members wanted a cadence to our communications. They wanted to hear from us regularly. They wanted to hear from us consistently. They wanted to make sure that they were um, receiving information that wasn't just about outages or changes, but, but hearing from us more regularly. And um, this has been an area where I've been very fortunate to have a staff member uh, who has some expertise in this area because I do not. Um, we also brought in an external consultant. So I will talk about that a little bit more uh, and Kat will talk about that as well. So for us, it was a necessity. We needed to, to uh, kind of do some relationship building. Um, and one of the things that we found was that we didn't have a consistent message. We weren't giving people a consistent message. So if you will go to my next slide, I believe. So as we developed our strategic plan, um, what we were really talking about, and you can see this bolded on the slide, is trust, reliability, and reputation. So we were saying, how do we do that internally? How do we improve our sustainability internally? And then how do we communicate that out? That's not something I can say, I am reliable. I need to show that, I need to demonstrate that. And what are gonna, the ways that we're gonna do that are through the communications that we have with our members. We also can't grow our membership base. We're right now about, depending on how you count library locations, between a quarter and a third of the public libraries in Pennsylvania. So there are opportunities for us, particularly in regions where we have a lot of the libraries to grow. But again, we need to raise our profile with our members and with the Pennsylvania library ecosystem in order to be able to do that. And the way that we're gonna do that, the way that we're gonna focus on our relationship with our users group, the way that we're gonna deepen our relationships with our statewide partners is by having consistent, clear communications. And Kat, we'll talk about this more, but one of the things that working with an external consultant helped us do was to say, what are the most important things that we want people to know about our organization? And so we are, Evergreen, an ILS created by libraries, by librarians for libraries. We're focused on our results-focused customer support. So we provide great customer support and we're focused on using that customer support to improve library service, ultimately to the end users. And we're dedicated to Pennsylvania libraries and library systems. So kind of coming up with this, what is the core of what we do and how are we gonna say that all the time? Um, was really important to me uh, in terms of, of coming into that role and trying to figure that out. 
Um, so as Katie mentioned, we didn't want to just uh, inform people about when up to upgrades are happening or maintenance windows are happening. We wanted to do a couple more things. So we kind of broke it up into these three types of goals. Um, and this might be useful for you as well. Um, so one of our goals was to inform. So strictly just, you know, informational, like there will be a maintenance window Wednesday night. Um, and this is really useful. Uh, because then our users are looking out uh, for, you know, any sort of blip that might happen um, after the maintenance window and they can get in touch with us. So it's just kind of like mutually beneficial to, to let people know. Um, we also inform our membership about benefits. So we added um, new services, third-party vendors. Uh, we added Chili Pack as an OPAC layer um, in September 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, we rolled out emails a few months in advance uh, to highlight some of the features of it, explain what it is, um, just to keep people informed so it's not a huge surprise uh, when it launches. Um, our second goal is to engage. So um, say, I don't know if everybody has like user group meetings, but we um, have a meeting once a year um, and we, our communications help us get event attendance and participation. Um, we also rely heavily on feedback from committees and roundtables. We have like a cataloging committee, circulation committee, ILL, we have several. And this, um, these communications help us engage with them and they have their own means of communicating with each other through our listservs. And then the last thing is to learn. Um, so feedback is obviously very important um, in order to improve our service and to understand more about pain points, um, understand what we're doing right. So we try to encourage feedback at every stage of our service. So like after a, a support ticket closes, we have a survey that gets automatically sent to the person so they can let us know if the problem was resolved, if they were happy with how we resolved it. Um, so these types of these are all types of communication that we uh, focus on. Okay, so second step: What channels are you going to use for your communications? Um, we have several. We have, like I mentioned, we have like a circulation listserv, ILL listserv. Um, we also have a newsletter that we send out monthly, which I'll talk about. And um, we do have social media. Our audience isn't really on um, social media that much. Uh, so we have it, but we don't necessarily focus on it. So just, I just recommend um, you know, going where your people are and uh, communicating in the, like wherever, they, wherever they are, meet them. Um, so we also have um, you know, in-person at conferences and meetings. We have communication via our marketing tools, um, our handouts, our banner. Um, and we also have swag such as these very popular Pale Spark notebooks that we gave out at the Pennsylvania Library Association conference this past October. And we also had some enamel pins. So another form of like passive communication, we encouraged our members to wear the pin on their lanyard so that they could recognize other Spark people and hopefully start a conversation about it. Okay, so you have your goals, you have your channels, and now you need to plan and plot, plot and plan. Um, so what does your, the way we thought about it was what does our consortium do in a year? Um, you know, there's events that happen on, you know, a yearly basis, um, like I mentioned the users group meeting, we usually upgrade once a year. Um, so these are the types of things that we were thinking about, like how are we going to, how often are we going to get in touch with people about these things? Um, and we use um, Trello, which I'll show you in the next slide, but you know, you probably already have tools at your disposal. Um, Outlook Calendar is a great way to plan out communications. You can create like a marketing or communications calendar and share it with your colleagues so that everybody is up to speed um, or Google Calendar. Um, and you also might have access to like Microsoft um, tools like Planner or Project. I haven't used those, 
myself, but these are just like things that you know you might already um, have access to. Trello, okay, Trello. Has anybody ever used Trello? Yay, okay. Um, so not a free or open source tool. Not a free, or, yeah. Um, but uh, Atlassian, the, the parent company, does have a very competitive um, uh, nonprofit pricing for those of us who are 501c3s. Um, and there is you there are free accounts. It doesn't give you um, all of the features. And, and I think at least one of the features that we're gonna show is, is uh, a paid feature. So there are lots of tools that do this. This happens to, to be the one that we have in uh, Kat brought it to us and we like it a lot. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, so Trello, if you're not familiar, is it's basically a Kanban board, which is just like a method of project management where you like take little post-its or cards or whatever and organize them into different projects. So the way we've done it is you see on the the far left, we have, um, that's our one of our uh, sections of our newsletter, which is the feature highlight. So um, that's intended like generally for all of our users, something that, you know, they might already know about, but they might not already know about because of staff turnover. Um, so for example, we did a, a feature highlight on inventory, um, different, different um, ways that you can do inventory. Um, and I'll show you what the newsletter looks like in a later slide. Um, and then the second column is our library spotlight. Um, and also I wanna mention the good thing about Trello is that we, the three of us at Pales can um, you know, put ideas in here. We don't necessarily have to um, fully flesh it out. We can just like, if say Elizabeth has a great um, conversation with a library and uh, she, wants to you know, spotlight something that they're doing, should just pop a card in there. And then I can use it um, for either my next newsletter or at some point in the future where we've run out of ideas. Um, we also have the, the upgrade list. So you can see we have a lot of um, communications that go along with upgrades. So for things like the test server upgrading, resource sharing upgrade, server upgrading, um, we have beta testers. So we try to plan as much as possible and anticipate what we, we're going to need for um, an upgrade and put that into the communication calendar so that um, we are prepared and that we can you know, keep up with the massive amount of communication that this requires. So we're on a fall upgrade schedule. We had gone to 3.9 this past November. And so we were able to recycle then our cards from the previous year to say, okay, our, our annual cycle is going to be roughly the same. The, the beta is going to come out in the spring and then we're going to start you know, loading it on test servers. So mm -hmm. um, we were able to just kind of cycle all that back around. Yep. Um, and then we have the tech updates. We also have user group um, events. So we have our users group meeting next week. And um, I have, I have um, cards for the different giveaways that we're doing each week of our um, series of events. And then the last one is closures and holidays. So probably at the beginning of the year, you already have your list of dates that your office is going to be closed. So we just put those on there so that we don't forget. And the nice thing about Trello is that you can uh, assign people to it. So you see like the Elizabeth's little avatar. Um, that means that she'll get like a notification when it's time to do that. And this is the, um, this, is, this was a paid feature, uh, the calendar feature, so that um, if you want to visualize it a different way, um, you can easily do that. So this kind of shows how potentially you could just use your calendar if you didn't want to pay for Trello. Okay, so you've planned your communications. What are you going to say? Um, so as Katie mentioned, we contracted with a marketing consultant um, that helped us focus on fairly simple ways that we can like very quickly improve how we present, present ourselves as an organization. Um, so what that consultant did was conduct interviews with us, the pale staff, board members, some of our library members, and ask them questions um, about what they like about us, what are some misconceptions that they <laughs> might, yeah, what, yeah, what 
their misconceptions um, so that we can maybe dispel them. Um, and that was a really eye-opening mm -hmm. um, process. And it helped us uh, get to that, get to like our three points that Katie pointed out on the uh, banner that we have throughout all of our different uh, marketing tools. So it wasn't wasn't quite like Oppo research, but what we did want to understand a little bit better is what are the things that uh, our members most value? What are the things that do set us apart that makes make us unique? Um, and so by contracting with somebody who was not in the library industry um, and had not, I mean, we all of all three of us had worked for member libraries prior to becoming consortial staff. So we wanted an, an outside perspective and that is there are many ways to get that. Um, but it was for us incredibly valuable for to have someone else help us uh, look at those themes and mm -hmm. distill them down and then combine it with with the branding tools and with the graphic look. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so that all of this led to us using this consistent verbiage of like for libraries, by librarians, results focused customer support, these big strong um, statements about who we are. And um, the marketing consultant also helped us, took a look at our website and helped us um, rearrange some of our navigation so that it was easier to get to the important pages on our website, like uh, who we are and like our, our handout um, with all our stats and the, like the, the rough and ready uh, handout. So, oh, and also the, uh, we, we revamped some of our marketing tools. So we actually have um, some of them up front if anybody right. wants to take so a look. I won't be on video while I do this and I apologize to the virtual attendees, but we have um, posters that are our support desk. This was actually an idea from <laughs> the marketing consultant. Um, these are yes. really popular and we love to bring them to our library visits so that um, everyone has a simple way to remember either our, our email address or our phone number. And we also have the QR code there. Yeah, can Vince have a coaster? Yeah. <laughs> Vince is our user. Vince group. is our user group chair. I'm gonna get more. Shout out to Vince. Um, so again, what sets sets us apart, and how can we incorporate this into all of our different marketing materials? Um, so we're highlighting these consistently. So I point, I drew an arrow to our handout, which says an ILS created for libraries by librarians, and we have that same line on our banner here. So consistent, consistent. Um, recognizable branding. So we use a brand kit that um, Canva comes with an easy to create brand kit. You can pick your fonts, you can pick your general color palette, um, logos, and other graphics that you use. So we, um, I don't know if it's easy to see, but on our one page um, handout, we have the kind of geometric um, background and we also use the same thing yes on our and banner. we have copies of these up here i won't uh vanna white them around but please come <laughs> up if you want to see them um they've got like our member map on them um and then our business cards are the same aesthetic as well yes um and again always offering ways to provide feedback or get in touch we really want to be reachable um this is something that we really pride ourselves on it we're, we're a team of three. And so you're gonna get one of us when you reach out to us. Um, there's no no like telemarketer <laughs> that's gonna answer the phone. <laughs> um, all right, so my example of uh, one of our communications, um, this is our feature highlight library spotlight newsletter, a little screenshot. It's um, a little bit longer than this, but um, I wanted to emphasize how when you send out a, a communication like this, make sure you know who your audience is. So like I mentioned, this is general membership. Um, we don't do anything like super niche, like cataloger tips and tricks. Um, we, we do just general, like that most people um, who use Evergreen would uh, benefit from. Um, always use 
as much as possible. Images, uh, screenshots. I think um, Erica from Biblio Commons was talking about how um, how it's people don't really want to see a wall of text. Mm -hmm. um, and so we try to use screenshots as much, much as possible. Um, and also I'm a big proponent of as many line breaks as possible and bolding and italicizing the important information um, and also add lots of links. And that's it for the content that we have. Um, these are our, this is representative of our business cards. So um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that we, we didn't really talk about, and, and this is, is something that I did with libraries um, when I worked directly for libraries, is the importance of, of the understandable annual report. So we do the public library survey, we call that an annual report, that's not a stakeholder annual report. So one of the things that that Kat helped me do, and we've done this both years that mm -hmm. we've worked together, um, is to create this same kind of graphical annual report that we want our libraries to be creating uh, for the consortial level. And we don't do them for libraries, we, we certainly pull any of the stats and data, um, but to be doing doing those same things that we're encouraging our libraries to do when they communicate with their stakeholders, we're doing when we're communicating with our stakeholders. So um, we have the, I didn't, I don't, the 2022 annual report is on the website. I have the 21 one here just because I had extra copies. Um, and we have sort of a marketing handout up here as well. If anybody wants to see any of those or, or take any of those. Yes. Are there questions, comments? Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, that's a good question, <laughs> Katie. Uh, Chili Pack was, um, I, w I wasn't there when they made the decision to buy Chili Pack. We are funded um, by a, a combination of member fee income, and we have a statewide services LSTA grant in Pennsylvania. So we are often able to uh, offer services out of that grant funding um, that we wouldn't be able to do if we were just supported by our members. Um, so we are um, in the process right now of doing uh, some more diligence on making sure that we are bringing people along um, as we make those decisions to purchase things. We've had for the last two years, a, a consortial uh, novelist subscription that, the, you know, when, when presented with sort of the cost benefit analysis, the membership is not electing to, to keep. The way that we do that because we're a 501c3 is that we have a, a group of people, Vince was a member of, of the group that got together this year and looked at the data who then make a recommendation to the board of the 501c3. And it's that board that ultimately sets both the member fees and the budget of the organization. We, we have done, we, we can do consortial voting. We don't typically do it for budgetary matters. <laughs> yeah, so so they did, uh, it, it was about a year of rollout, I think, for, from the decision mm -hmm. to purchase mm -hmm. uh, the product to it coming into production. So we were the first uh, adopters of Chili Fresh products on Evergreen. So there was some development that needed to be done. Uh, and so they did, you know, that process. There was a group of libraries that beta tested it. Um, and then there was, uh, because we also did it the same week as our uh, Evergreen update, like our, we, went, we went from 3.3 to 3.7, like one week, and the next week was, was the chili pack, and, um, uh, and it, it was actually all fine. Yeah, it, uh, part, it yeah. was, it was heartburn inducing before that, but, but it, the, the actual weeks were okay. Um, so yeah, so there was just like, there was this just constant, like, these things are going to be different. These things are going to be different. These things are going to be different. <laughs> um, so I, I think that 
that there was I think that that rollout was done well. I think that because the decision to purchase the product was not something that had necessarily been vetted with membership in the first place, that that was one of the things that we were making an effort to self-correct for. And I, I wasn't there. Yeah, I wasn't there. Yeah. So, and there definitely were some people who came in on launch day and saw a new OPAC and were like, "What the." heck is this because <laughs> it's a, the book lists are an entirely new display and stuff yeah. like that so there was yeah there were there were some anytime you you have that much of a change you're gonna have some speed bumps so mm -hmm. yeah that was a good question thank you other questions Oh, we wish we could make them. Yeah, that's one of the things, that's one of the challenges that we have is that our listserv is opt-in and we have one that's intended for all the very, very important information, like the OPAC is going to change, goes to our Spark users listserv. Um, but, you know. And their mailman lists, they're, yeah. it's the, the same um, backbone as the Evergreen list. And we yeah. have a half dozen probably, um individual lists yes the smart users being the big one yeah um yeah one of the things that we do continue to struggle with and i would love if anybody has two rules or tips for this is to get, make sure that when there's staff turnover that new staff get registered for those lists mm -hmm. um and um we do it like we we we, we put it in like our our surveys We're like you came you know like you came to the annual meeting are you would you like to be signed up for a new a new yeah. Like check the box, and then we can we can add people. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. yeah, it's tough though. It's tough to yeah. I I like that idea about the you know the handoff of when the staff turnover happens. Yeah, yeah. it can be difficult. To... Yeah, because we've met with directors who are like, I'm new. I've been here for two months, and I had no idea you were sending messages, um, which is not not nice to hear. <laughs> Does it, how do other people, are your consortium mostly like email lists? Are there other things that they use? Carrier pigeons? <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. But for directors. Yeah. Wait, sometimes we're not aware there's a new director. Um, that that but we could start adding we could start adding new things. yeah yeah no i i like that idea i'm just like there's a you know <laughs> turnover <laughs> was yeah yes uh, so yeah in yeah. we yes yeah, so in 39 the customizable splash screen is something that oh. so far all we've done is put a funny image on the test server so that we know that we're yeah. logged into the i think it's like ron burgundy or something yeah on the test server but um that's but good. yes that's a good idea especially for upgrade news yeah yes brilliant. thank you brilliant sitka friends and i saw a hand Yes, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. And you have the slams, is that what it is? So in North Carolina, they, uh, so the comment, which I should repeat because we're um, on live on Zoom, is uh, that the North Carolina Cardinal Consortium uses Basecamp, which is uh, a tool that uh, lets people opt in and then decide like what messages they want to receive in the platform, what they want to be emailed about. Um, you would have like access controls, like who can send out messages, like can members send out messages. Mm -hmm. um, and in North Carolina, they also have, what does the SLAM stand for? System Login Access Manager. So they have an individual point of contact at each library that is the person who is responsible for the user accounts at that library system. Uh, and so that's that's a useful um, tool as well to be able to make sure that it's it's easier to 
I'm sure it's not perfect, but uh, it's easier to maintain the, the one point of contact often. Because uh, with us, we often work with directors, um, but we also work with circulation managers and um, all, all kinds of different types of staff. So um, we, we hope that the person who's usually our point of contact does let us know when, when there are major staff changes, but it can be a little, a little harder to track. That's just for us. Yep. Um, yes. We could, I guess we might be able to publish the calendar if people wanted to see it. It's it's not very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they were if they really want to see our like test server upgrade schedule, we would we would be happy to share it with them. But it's yeah, so we use Trello as our um staff task management so we have a number of with the communications is one of the boards we each have our own task boards um and and so there are uh we that's our that's our way of organizing our work in general uh and that's one one of the projects that's organized through that tool but it is just staff mm -hmm. So we had, we've got time. Um, okay, we had Basecamp. We had more people using email lists. Did I miss any ways that people are communicating with there? How many of your consortia also ha have in-person or hybrid user group meetings? I know Mobius had one a couple of weeks ago that people could actually come to. Do other, yeah. Missouri does, Noble does. Does anybody else still have like a physical thing that people can come to? We are we went to a virtual uh, statewide users group meeting. Do other people have virtual like day or half day events? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Oh. oh okay. Yeah. Yes. And what we're trying to do, but haven't gotten to yet, is to do the statewide things virtually, uh, except that, and then we do an event at our library association conference, but then that's only people who are at that event. Um, but then to do regional events, because Pennsylvania is wide. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we're trying to do more where if we're, if we're in an area, then we are meeting with you know, we have have something that people in multiple counties can come to, um, so that they're they are inter not just interacting with us, but interacting with other people that they wouldn't normally see. Yeah. Cool. Did we have other discussion questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want to summarize uh, for the virtual attendees is that your consortium, which is Westchester Library System in New York State. Um, it, they do two weekly communications, one of them focused on ILS topics, evergreen topics, one of them focused on digital resource. So you're also a like electronic content consortium. Okay. Uh, so which is not something that, that pales has, we don't, we don't have uh, shared electronic content right now. Um, and so they do one of those each week and just that e each of those is an opportunity to have your branding, to have that reminder. Um, Kat did branded signatures for us for our email. So we like that. Um, and it is, I like, uh, we, we rely heavily on Canva. We have the brand kit in Canva. Um, and that's helpful because you can go in and just change the text on the last thing we did. I am guilty of like, I'm a text email person. I guess it was cause I learned to use email before you could put images in. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but uh but i i forget and i don't i don't do those things um elizabeth uh davis who's our support desk manager uh has has gotten significantly better at it she mm -hmm. has said she's like oh okay we're gonna i'm gonna tell people about this i'm gonna make a header for it so that the header is at least the header you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yes yeah. so yeah. so email templates yes um if you have email response templates then if the branding is already in the email response templates you're probably not going to delete it <laughs> <laughs> and we could do that too yeah yeah uh because you can do that i i don't have a ton of templates but you can do that with outlook as well which is what we have yeah so um just like with anything else anything that you can automate if it's there, if it's already there when you when you open the email template, if it's already there in your signature, um, if it, if the calendar is already there, then so you know we then we when we need to do an out of cycle announcement, then we are able to look and say, okay, well, what are the things that we can move around so that we're not sending them five emails this week and then no emails for three weeks? Mm -hmm. So you guys kind of have that cadence down of like two emails a week. You know, you're gonna get two emails a week um and so we're we're we've, we've got it evened out we're not yeah. quite to that to that level of consistency but what we're we're much more than than we were other questions comments concerns about communicating with your consortium members other things that people are struggling with so getting stuff to people knowing who the people are that need to get the stuff getting that to them ha making them read the stuff <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> maybe may, even if they only read the things you put in bold mm -hmm. getting them to read the things that you put in bold are there other challenges that people are having in terms of communicating with their member bases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah there is a lot of email noise so that does make it challenging to I know a lot of people that just ignore anything you know anything not uh flagged important yeah and our library directors are busy mm -hmm. yeah um and and that's we're we're you know and we and we are busy so it's it's not like um that's not real and and we have because our listservs are open anybody who's on the listserv can reply when we do have outages we get this like popcorn effect of people saying whether or not they're down and then everybody's saying that they're up like why do we need 20 emails that it's working <laughs> so so there's like then then i think everybody ignores the listserv for a couple of weeks because they they were tired of that so mm -hmm. um yeah we and we one of the things that we do amy and i should repeat what what you said which is that sometimes there is no replacement for a phone call or an in-person visit you just it it works better to get people's attention one of the things that we've done is we we looked at the holes in our support tickets geographically speaking we looked at the places that weren't submitting support tickets and we went to those libraries we scheduled visits at those libraries because once I bet that when you pick up that phone and call somebody, they're going to read your next few emails. Once you have that personal connection, mm -hmm. then you're going to you you build that credibility and that trust, and it is more likely that they will pay attention to your future communication. Mm -hmm. um, I we have some people that we're probably always going to have to call. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but when you visit them, you can give them a coaster. Yes. We hand out a lot of coasters. Uh, the uh, a form, former occupant of my position said, you don't want everyone to be able to email the support desk, do you? <laughs> We're like, well, well yeah. given, given the choices, we'll take more emails to the support desk over fewer emails to the support desk. Definitely. So we have a few minutes left. Um, we will hang out up here and we have, um, we have coasters, we have business cards, we have uh, flyers if anybody would like them. Is there anything else from the chat? Nope. Okay, perfect.
Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us.